Hi, Trish here. Let's do yin yoga for arthritis, getting down into our joints this morning. Of course, as we know, all yoga is for arthritis because all yoga benefits our joints. Let's start off today with several deep breaths. Maybe the first few just beginning in the nose and out the mouth and then moving into breathing through your nose. You might even choose to practice a little alternate nostril breathing where you close off the right nostril, breathe up through the left. Close off the left nostril, breathe out the right. Breathing back up the right. Closing it off as you breathe out the left. Continuing in that way for maybe five or 10 rounds of breath. I'll just take three or four more breaths here. Feel free to pause the video and take as many breaths as you need to really feel centered and grounding in your practice today. As you finish your breath, just enjoy the movement of your body. Noticing how it feels, maybe just begin to move gently, rolling shoulders. If, you're been, if you've been on your back, you'll maybe bend your knees and rock a little bit. We're gonna just take our time coming up to seated and then moving into table pose as our first shape today. Oh, I forgot to mention that it's going to be really useful to have one block at least with you today. And of course, you can use towels, blankets, pillows, anything that works best for you. Coming into table pose, we're going to begin to round our spine into a Halloween cat or that angry cat pose. Feel free to walk your knees in slightly, maybe your hands in a little bit. Trying not to lock your elbows and maybe choosing to turn the eyes of the elbows toward a crossing position. So like my right eye of the elbow is pointing over toward the top left corner of my mat, but my fingers still point forward, my hands are spread wide, and my back is really nice and round. Chin dropping down, looking between the knees. I like my toes curled under just because it gives a little bit of a stretch to the foot, but that's not super important. You could choose to do it differently. Begin to notice the difficulty of the breath here. It's just really spreading the back body out. The belly is slightly engaged. Notice which muscles you're using to hold the pose and to breathe. Take your time now, bending your elbows, putting the elbow points down in your hand prints. We'll bring the palms together, maybe into prayer pose or linking the fingers. And we're gonna round that spine one more time, dropping the head. Maybe your head comes to the floor, maybe you slide a block under it, or even rest your forehead on your thumbs. Rounding the spine. We're just stretching it out. As usual, it's just fine if you want to add just a slow, almost imperceptible movement or rocking. Let's take one more breath here. and then drop the belly down as you bring your hands back onto the mat into those elbow points and sag the belly down. Let the shoulders roll up and back, maybe sag the chest a little bit, let the tailbone tip. Feel free to move slightly side to side as you work your way 
into your cow pose. We'll just be holding here for one minute in this position, spreading those fingers out. Arthritis tends to settle in the hands, the wrists, the hips, and the knees. Of course, everyone is unique, so you may have your own brand of arthritis. I'm sure people have it in the neck, in the spine. And I'll be reading a little later about how arthritis works in the body and how yoga can help. Notice where the breath is now as you breathe in this counter pose. This will be our first back bend of the day. Take your time now, bringing your elbow prints back down into those hands, in the hand print, the elbow points. The hands can come back together, prayer hands or linked fingers. Keeping the back sag, the belly down. Now you might be able to bring your head to the floor. Let the chest sag, but keep the hips right over the knees. Just allowing that back to feel that gentle curve. And where is your breath? Keep it nice, long and slow. And just one more complete breath in and out. And for our resting pose, we begin to crawl the knees back, crawling the elbows forward, opening up the hips and lying down flat on the belly. Just letting the front of the body rest on the floor. Breathing into the low belly. Adjusting, getting comfortable as you need to. My affirmation today on the, on the blackboard is resting heels. Really allow yourself to surrender into this restful moment. You can watch that low back as it adjusts. Feel free to rock your heels or your hips slightly when you like. Continue breathing and resting as I describe the next shape to you. There's going to be two very different options here. They're the same pose, but one is on your back and one is on your knees. If you are going to do the pose on your knees, you'll be coming up to table, stepping one foot forward, coming into dragon pose, maybe using a block under the shoulders, coming up as high as you like. Or if you prefer to do that pose on your back, you will just roll over, bending the knees, pull one knee into the chest and open it wide, maybe even holding onto the foot, stretching the other leg out into a half happy baby. This is the exact same shape. One is on your back, one is on your hands and knees. So. It's up to you as you move there slowly now. And we'll only be holding the shape for two minutes. It's recommended for people with osteoporosis to do this on your back, but there are nice, simple ways to keep your spine long and straight on your knees as well. So as you come, if you're coming into the knee down pose, you make sure that that back knee is on a diagonal from the hip. The front knee is right over the ankle of that front foot. And the knee is kind of going to the side of the ribs, just like it would in that half happy baby. Settling in here, deep breathing. This is a very intense pose, dragon pose. And it's important because it's like a lunge. It's a, a lunge in stillness. I like to move in my lunges. 
So it's really therapeutic for that hip joint, opening it up. So let's begin to understand arthritis together this morning. I'm reading from a book called The New Yoga for People Over 50 by Sousa Francina. It was written in the 90s, I believe. Let me just check the copyright date, 97, 1997. I love what she says about the body and arthritis. She says over 40 million Americans struggle with arthritis. The term arthritis means inflammation of the joints and refers to a number of diseases that produce deterioration in various joint structures, which causes pain and immobilization. Let's just take one more breath here. And then take your time, moving nice and slow, rocking the hips back. Now, if you've been on your knees, you have a couple of options here. You can just pull that front leg back and go back down to your belly. You could stay in table and do cat cows, or you could even come up into down dog today as a resting pose. It's a little more yang or yang than um, our usual yin shapes, but it's still a really nice, deep, full body stretch. Of course, if you've been on your back, you'll just slowly Release that hold and move into rest again. Breathing deeply, watching as that deep hip compression and stretch releases and comes back to neutral. Maybe another breath or two, feel free to begin to move gently taking your time as you find your way onto the other side of the pose. And you might even choose to do one leg from the back position and the other leg from kneeling. Since you are an individual with unique needs, you can address that in your practice. And we will begin the two minute hold. She goes on to say in her book, severe arthritis often results in loss of function or even deformity. In extreme cases, people who suffer with these diseases are no longer able to live independently. There are two main types of arthritis, osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory disorder resulting in stiffness in the joints and muscles. Joint erosion and pain are part of rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative disorder that erodes the cartilage that cushions areas where bones rub against one another. The roughening of this normally smooth tissue makes moving difficult and painful. Osteoarthritis frequently occurs in people who are overweight or whose joints are painful from extreme overuse. Keep breathing slowly, watching the body. Let's all just take one more deep breath here. Moving nice and slow, releasing from the pose. This time we are going to come down onto our bellies. You can always take a down dog if you want one, 
We're going to move now into the back bending portion of our practice, but not until after we rest. Allowing the body that belly down rest, toning the abdomen with breathing into the low belly. Listening to the sound of your breath as it flows through your nostrils. Thinking about the beautiful journey of the breath as it cools the nasal passages and flows down through the sinuses, the throat, into the lungs, filling them up and then slowly emptying them out again. Feel free to keep breathing and resting here on your belly or begin to move yourself up into Sphinx pose. Elbows coming onto the mat right below the shoulders or wider depending on your low back condition this morning. Looking forward or maybe supporting your chin in your hands in what they call TV watching pose. Of course, you can also grab that block and put it under your forehead. You'll want to consider walking your legs a little longer on the mat, maybe widening them, just looking for a position that feels like, ah, oh, maybe I can stay for a moment. It's not one, a position that feels like you could stay forever because it can be slightly dis a little bit of slight discomfort, but not enough to make you want to run away. And that, that's a fine point to talk about in yin. We want to maintain the pose in order to create the opportunity for change. And she goes into that as she talks about arthritis here. The cycle of arthritis begins with joint pain and swelling. As you probably know from even minor injuries, most of us respond to pain that occurs during movement by keeping still. However, we, know, we now know that one of the worst things for someone with arthritis is inactivity. Instead, regular gentle movement helps reduce pain and maintain mobility. Physicians are discovering that an appropriate yoga-based exercise program expands the range of motion without stressing or straining the joints. This is all very good news. We are going to be holding this pose for about three minutes. And if you haven't been practicing yin in a while, you may be ready to come out after two. So please pay attention to what you need. Also at the end of the three minutes, I will give you an opportunity to do seal pose, or you could do that on your own. Since we've now reached the two minute mark together, you could always go up for the last minute of seal. To remain healthy, joints must move and bear weight. Without weight bearing, bones become fragile and prone to fracture and collapse, the condition we call osteoporosis. Physical movement promotes health in many systems of the body. Movement increases circulation, which in turn reduces swelling and increases the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the joint tissues to facilitate their healing. That's what we're doing right now. That deep breathing is continually oxygenating the joints and the muscles. With immobilization, a cycle of deterioration can begin. We've now reached about the three minute point. If you'd like to go up into seal pose, you'll just widen your hands, maybe out toward the edges of your mat or forward, straightening the elbows, bringing the shoulders up and then rolling them back long neck, just sensing how long you need to stay in this shape. Maybe choosing not to do it at all. Coming down out of it all the way to your belly whenever you're ready. I am going to let you know when a whole minute has passed. Deep breaths.
Unlike other forms of physical exercise, yoga has something for everyone. No one is excluded. People with chronic disease and disabilities face the can'ts at every turn in their lives. They can't play golf, they can't play tennis, can't run, can't overexert themselves, can't walk without canes, some can't walk at all, but everyone can do yoga. In yoga, there is no can'ts. That's one whole minute in seal pose. Go ahead and release. Yoga can be modified and adapted to suit the needs of everyone, says Lorna Bell, RN, who teaches gentle yoga for people with arthritis. Releasing our back bend, just enjoying that delicious ache in the low back, feeling the effects of your stretch. Just smile to yourself and think of something really good in your life right now. Taking small moments of gratitude is a beautiful way to build a beautiful life. And we'll just take three more deep breaths here on our belly. And then consider if you would like to move up into child's pose, you'll crawl your elbows in. If you'd prefer to roll over and pull your knees in on your back, that is another great alternative. Taking your time, not moving quickly at all, maybe even pausing and then slowly settling into your child pose. And we will be in child pose for another three minutes. Letting the back slowly rest in a more counter pose to the back bend. We don't want to get too rounded in the low back though, so if you can keep the back flat, that's a really nice idea, or even rolling onto your back to help support the low spine and pull the knees into the chest. And just enjoy your breath. This last part of this section about what arthritis does is some of the most fascinating information to me because it's the cycle of deterioration and how we can break that cycle with yoga. So immobil with immobilization or stillness or not moving because of pain, a cycle of deterioration begins. The muscles begin to shorten from lack, lack of stretching, which in turn creates deformed contractures. Unused muscles lose strength. Then weaknesses coupled with joint swelling make the joint unstable. Joints in this condition are vulnerable to dislocation, increased injury, and pain. As arthritis patients feel weaker and more vulnerable, they become increasingly fearful and dependent, tired and depressed. Because movement is crucial to so many physiological processes, the arthritic person's health tends to deteriorate. The normal functioning of the immune system declines, infections and illnesses occur, and the person becomes frustrated and depressed, and the cycle is self-perpetuating. And really, that the, to sum that up is the phrase that um, we've used a lot in class is move it or lose it. And the fascinating thing about yin is how simple these movements are and they still count as movement. 
that deep compression in the hips, the bending in the knees, twisting in the spine, and then the breathing is massaging all of the joints, the muscles, the tendons, bringing new life into the part of the body where you feel that stretch. And you can add to this the power of your thought and affirmations. You can breathe in, I am, and breathe out healing or anything that arises in your heart today. And just one more deep breath. Slowly coming up to a kneeling pose or table pose, depending on your knees today. If you're going to be kneeling, then actually let's all take a little break here. Let's all sink our hips to one side and bring the legs around instead of going into that table pose, because I realize we have to open up that knee joint. <laughs> There's some really interesting information about uh, the next pose that we're gonna do. So I'll tell you now, it's gonna be hero's pose or a twist. So we'll see how it goes. And compressing the knee joint, similar to what we just did in child's pose, actually helps with swelling in the knees, because when you compress the joint, you're squeezing the toxins out and you're also not, there's not enough room for all those white blood cells that love to come and surround issues that are um, trying to heal. So you can even rub your knees a little bit, smile, take a deep breath, and then you can choose. You'll either be coming back onto your knees feet flat. Now there's lots of props that are important here. Some people need to have a towel or a blanket right under the crease of the ankle to be able to sit on their feet. Some people also like to take a block and slide it between the legs. I like to slide it right between my feet and sit back on that block. You can sit on two blocks. The higher you get, the less pressure there is in the knee, so the safer it is for that joint. And then we'll sit up nice and tall. Now, if this is just not an option for you today, then please come into table pose. And from either seated on your knees or table pose, we're gonna do a little twist. So maybe you're in table and you're just gonna come into your twist by sliding one hand behind the other arm, coming down onto shoulder and ear. If you're gonna maintain the seated posture of hero's pose, then you're just going to simply turn your hands to one side, keeping the spine tall. And we'll just be in the twist on each side for about two minutes. Making sure the head is aligned. Nice deep breaths. And if at any time the knees just, it just creates too much pressure there, please go into the table pose or you can go back into Sphinx pose. There are lots of options here. You can roll over on your back, back into knees to chest. That's all good. So here are some guidelines for a yoga program for arthritis. And I love her guidelines. She says yoga's approach to arthritis recognizes the interaction between the mind, the body, and the spirit. Combining medical evaluation, nutrition, yoga, massage, and other holistic therapies can break the debilitating cycle of arthritis. Yoga helps people with arthritis be aware of their physical limitations without being paralyzed by them. An intelligent, non-mechanical, individualized stretching and strengthening program is one of the keys to restoring health to arthritic joints. There's this beautiful quote that I read on Monday about arthritis by a doctor named Mary Schatz. She says, moving hurts, but not moving destroys. Incorrect movement harms, but intelligent movement heals. So a properly aligned movement designed to strengthen our weak muscles and stretch those that have shortened are crucial to restoring stability and range of motion. Let's just take two more breaths in this twist. Let's 
gently coming to center. Just take a moment, maybe rocking a little bit and choose how your knee, see how your knees feel here and you're gonna make some choices. You might go directly into the twist on the other side or you may want to add a prop or rearrange. You can do this, seat twi this twist seated as well. We all have our beds and our furniture nearby. We can sit on them. When you feel ready, you'll move back into the twist. Breathing deeply to allow the body to settle. And you could choose to twist your, your, your eye gaze over your back shoulder or back the other way. So here are the guidelines to keep in mind. She has about five or six of them. The first one is always respect pain. People with arthritis must learn the difference between the beneficial feeling of muscles stretching and the pain that signals harm. They must distinguish between the normal discomfort of moving stiff joints and pain caused by a destructive movement or an excessive demand on the joint. Never bounce. <laughs> Bouncing causes reflex tightening of muscles and can result in torn muscles and tendons. Sudden or severe pain is always a warning. Continuing an activity after such a warning may cause joint damage. In general, if pain lasts more than two hours after your activity, ask someone who understands good alignment to check and see how you're practicing. If your alignment is good, consider easing up on your effort and experiment with holding the position you are suspecting caused the pain for less time. Try moving more slowly and practice more regularly. Most problems can be overcome by paying close attention to your body's innate feedback system. Let's take three more deep breaths. Gently turn forward again, maybe twist the other way, rolling the shoulders. Begin to move back to table pose. You can curl the toes or lift the feet off the floor and just twist out the ankles a little bit. We are going to move slowly into a seated position for the next few shapes, or of course you can do them lying down on your back and I'll show you both of those variations. We're gonna be doing shoelace or eagle's legs with a different variation in the arms. I don't know that we've ever done this before. It's a cow's head arms. So if you're gonna do it seated, you're just gonna cross one leg over, the knees stacked one on top of the other. Some people also like to tuck the other foot under, it's up to you what feels best there. This is our deep hip stretch. And then the arms we're gonna do are reaching toward the hands up the back. So one hand, the palm is down, the other hand, the knuckles are on the low back. Now, this is a lot and I would stay nice and tall and straight. And we're gonna be here for at least three minutes. Now, if you prefer to do this on your back, it's very similar. You'll just be laying back. Maybe you'll pull the knees into your chest. You can hold onto your toes or you can slide the palm of the hand on the floor under the low back so the knuckles are touching. The other hand slides the knuckles are on the floor, palm up. Let's see, yeah, <laughs> that's the best way to do it. And let the shoulder adjust into that shape. Let's see if you can see that better here. And maybe just keeping the toe on the floor can help to support this pose. So whichever you've chosen, know that you can always switch to the other one at any time, allowing your body what it needs, especially if the arms start to get tired. And don't worry about letting the fingers touch. You can also use your strap between your hands, throwing it over the shoulder of the hand that's up in the air 
grabbing the bottom of the strap. That's not super important. And also, if the shoulders don't like that, you can always come into the eagle arms instead. Lots of options. Once you have found a shape, take a few deep breaths and then consider if you need to adjust again. Moving towards stillness and rest in the pose, that surrender that Yin asks us to allow. Her next tip is a good one, balancing work and rest. Conserve energy, balance activity and rest. This principle applies to exercising as well as all daily activities. Overwhelming fatigue is counterproductive and may even be harmful. Weakening the fatigued muscles can set the stage for joint instability and injury. Balancing your active yoga session with yoga's deeply relaxing restorative poses like yin and actual restorative yoga can be the best prescription. Restorative poses help the internal healing process to work. And breathing properly. Without fully expanding your lungs, the muscles you are exercising cannot be adequately supplied with oxygen. I want to read that one more time. Without fully expanding your lungs, the muscles you are exercising cannot be adequately supplied with oxygen. Holding your breath while stretching inhibits relaxation. Smooth, peaceful, rhythmic breathing through the nose reduces pain and tension and increases the feeling of deep relaxation that follows a stretching session. Which is one of the reasons I love yin. It produces such beautiful calm. Let's just rest in quiet for the next 30 seconds or so here in the pose knowing that you can release from that shape at any time. One more deep breath. And then releasing uncrossing the legs. If you've been seated, let's go ahead and lay all the way back. If you've been on your back, maybe just plant your feet on the floor, let your knees knock together, or begin to stretch those legs out. Moving into relaxation, the rest between the poses. Noticing which of your hips feels the deeper stretch. It's probably the one that had the leg in front or on top. Noticing which of your arms feels the stretch in front or in back. Feel free to wiggle your toes or just rest in stillness. Taking your time, if you're ready to move, maybe bending the knees and rocking a little side to side in the hips. If you know you're going to remain on your back, you might cross the other leg on top. Tuck the other hand in the low back, the other arm goes over. Maybe stay down or pull the knees in. If you're going to be coming up to seated, you'll just slowly come up. Keep one, the other leg stretched out, crossing one leg on top. Maybe see about how it feels to tuck it under. Remembering those deep breaths, encouraging the body to relax and noticing if there's a place of tension or tightening or holding, allowing yourself to soften there or maybe to just readjust.
she goes on in her yoga tips to suggest that maintaining muscle strength and range of motion are very important. Think about the way your body works and then use each joint in its most stable and functional anatomical plane. Avoid extending your limbs abruptly or in unnatural directions. Also be careful not to hold a single position for too long. <laughs> there is no set answer to the perennial question, how long should I stay in the pose? Long enough so that a healthy change has been made. If you're seated, you might add those arms. And not so long that your body feels unhealthy strain or stiffens up from leaving the muscles in a static position for too long. In my opinion, this is particularly talking about standing poses. But there are poses like in yin where we do start to stiffen up. If that starts to happen to you and you get too cold, please come out and move again. Avoid mechanical repetitions and counting while exercising. I feel so vindicated by that because I always forget to count. Watch the flow of your breath and your body's response to the pose and learn to tune in to what your body is telling you. We've been in this shape now for two minutes, so have another minute. Feel free to make an adjustment if you need it. She also suggests lots and lots of props. The use of props can help improve blood circulation and breathing capacity, can help you stretch, strengthen, and relax, and improve our body alignment. By providing more height, weight, and support, props help you extend beyond habitual limitations and teach you that your body is capable of doing much more than you think it can. This is especially important for those coping with arthritis. Let's just take two more deep breaths. And gently moving in slow motion to come out of the pose and move on to your back if you aren't there already. Opening up the joints, finding a resting position, and just noticing how you feel. You might take a minute after you've rested to look around for your block. We want to make sure it's, it's within reach as we stay here on our backs now. Take a few more breaths. Feel free to move, maybe rocking the hips slightly, rocking the knees. If it sounds like a good idea, you can pull your knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze, maybe roll out the back of your back a little bit, the back of your back. Next, we're gonna do some twists. So my favorite twist is planting the feet on the floor, scooting the hips toward one edge of the mat a little bit, a couple inches, and letting the knees fall together toward the other side. But if I keep my feet on the floor, it lowers the twist into the hip joint. If I pick my knees up and pull them into my chest and then roll over, it lifts the twist up into the mid spine. So choose which one of those feels good to you today. And maybe slide a block between your knees, just allowing a little bit of lift on that top knee so that the shoulders might go a little flatter on the floor as you open your arms out wide. Allow your breath to be long and slow. Mm. 
The last two tips that she has are warming up. Although affected joints should be moved through a full range of motion at least once a day, it's unrealistic and possibly harmful to expect to attain full range of motion on the first try. Work into a pose gradually. It's often helpful to relax in a hot bath or shower or a warm room. And finally, walk. I love that this is in a yoga book. Walking is the ideal companion to an intelligent, therapeutic, stretch and strengthen program. The, the tranquilizing effect of its moderate rhythmic exercise decreases pain. The movement and weight bearing aspect of walking improves joint health and equally important walking can take you outdoors in touch with nature. The greatest of all healers, which uplifts the mind and the spirit. Pace yourself and walk where there are places to rest and stop when you feel tired. Be in the moment and walk with awareness of the beauty around you. Allow your breath to be your focus for the last 30 seconds here on this side of the twist. On your next exhale, slowly bring your knees back to center. You can keep the block between them if it feels okay for you. Scooting the hips back to center, take a moment in the middle of your mat, and then kindly find the other side of your twist. Scooting the hips to the other edge. The knees always rock away from the direction that we scooted our hips. And we'll just rest here in quiet for these two minutes, letting the body slowly sink into the twist, adjusting the shoulders or the knees. Remembering pulling the knees into the chest can feel different from keeping the feet on the floor. might feel good to engage a little bit of ujjayi breathing, that slight constriction in the throat. It sounds like sighing with your mouth closed. Or some people call it Darth Vader breath. In this beautiful heart opening space, you might move back into gratitude thinking about the good things in your life. Taking four more deep breaths. Moving back to center on your exhale. Scooting your hips back to center, you can take the block out, maybe rock your knees if it feels good or pull them in or stretching the legs out might feel great at this point. We just have one more shape that we'll end our practice with, a supported bridge pose. So whenever you like, you can bend your knees again, plant your feet on the floor, Lift the hips and slide the block under. 
And you might choose to just stay right there with the feet flat, the knees bent, the hips sinking into the block. Or there's lots of different variations here. Some people like to stretch one leg out at a time, stretching into the fronts of the hips or both legs out together. And some people like to pull the knees into the chest and push the legs up in the air for a waterfall pose. And I'll just have you in bridge pose for about two, maybe three minutes. And then we'll slide the block out and end with a short Shavasana. While you're in your bridge pose, of course, you can also choose to just put your legs up the wall. While you're in whatever shape you've chosen, I'd like to read this beautiful testimonial that's at the end of each of her chapters in this book of a, a real yoga student. Her name was Lolly Font, and she wrote this um, for the book. But just letting you know a little bit about her, she's a teach. She was a teacher with an MA in education. And at 43, after raising five children, she became paralyzed with arthritis in her spine, neck, shoulders, and hands, and yoga became her saving grace. She says, obvious to me now, but not then, I was in the process of a deep transformation. Miraculously, I discovered yoga and I broke through the paralysis and stiffness in my body as the asana practice washed, it, washed its magic through my being. Never being an athletic person, I was overwhelmed by the beauty of the postures and the feelings of accomplishment and satisfaction I derived from attaining mastery over each pose. The expanded breathing, stretching, postural alignment, and balance challenged my arthritic joints and created a new life for me. She decided to go on to become a yoga teacher. And then she decided to start a program for seniors at her Jewish community center. She says, my students were my greatest teachers. They taught me about the effects of aging on older bodies and how yoga can reverse common problems. Learning by doing appeals to me and that is what I did, she says. Because they've lived in their bodies for a long time, older people can become aware of subtle changes. And when these subtleties multiply, they may expand into larger problems. And she says, I was able to point these physical problems out and help to avert or minimize some adverse outcomes. Maturing adults have physical problems such as difficulties with hands, feet, walking, eyesight, diet, and sleep. In the yoga class, they can discuss these problems and gain support from the teacher and the group. Moving together in a group also creates a pleasant environment and encourages friendships among like-minded people. Amen to that. You can feel free to stay if you don't wanna move, or you might slowly bring your feet back to the floor if they've been up and gently remove the block, coming out of the pose, coming into Shavasana, your final resting shape. As you settle into Shavasana, I'd like to sing to you the yin prayer in Sanskrit. In English, the words mean, may we be protected together. May we be nourished together. May we work together with the energy of greatness. May our study be filled with brilliance and light. May there be no ego between us. Om, peace, peace. Thank you.
thank you for practicing yin yoga with me today. May our joints thank us. Namaste.